Ooh, I'm sweating like hell. In this video, guys, I will share with you five editing tips that I wish I had known earlier that helped me become a faster editor and create better videos overall. Now, I'll be using Final Cut Pro. However, these tips can also be applied if you're using DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. So with that said, guys, let's get started right away. So my first tip is to play back your clips at double the speed. Whenever I edit an aerial clip of mine, I always watch the clip at double the speed as it helps me to quickly scan through the video and pick out the best part. Parts. Whenever I edit an aerial clip of mine, I always watch the clip at double the speed. Whenever I edit an aerial clip of mine, I always watch the clip at double the speed. Now the audio will still be clear, but it might be more challenging if you play it back four times the speed. So I prefer doubling the speed instead. It's little things like that that make editing a bit more fun and less tedious. My second tip is to use the custom keyboard shortcut. I keep most of the important shortcuts on the left side. Side. This way I don't have to move my hand away from the keyboard and I can quickly execute an action. Now you don't have to use the exact same shortcuts that I have, but I find that it has worked really well for me and I'm sure you will find it useful too. The reverse playback is assigned to number one, play and pause is set to number two, and forward playback to number three. And pressing the number three again enables me to play back the clip double the speed. Additionally, I have the Q key assigned to trim the start of the clip. The W key is assigned to the blade tool and trims the clip at the playhead, and the E key is assigned to trim the end of the clip. So instead of selecting the blade tool, then making a cut, making a cut again, selecting the clip, and then deleting it, I can simply use these new assigned custom keys by making a cut using the key W and then trimming the left part of it by hitting the key Q. And I can also do it the other way around, make a cut and then select the E to make a cut to the right. This way it only takes me two steps instead of three steps to trim out the unnecessary parts. Now most editing softwares come with a default keyboard shortcuts, but I don't recommend using them. It's best to really customize your keyboard shortcuts so that you can edit in a much faster way. Tip number three is cutting out the unnecessary parts. Really keep what's important and remove the rest out of your video. Your video should be as long as it needs to be, but as short as possible. Things like long pauses between the sentences, ums and uhs and uh. Now to determine which part to remove, I recommend viewing your video from the perspective of a viewer. Imagine it as if it were someone else's video and consider what you would trim. If you have someone who can watch it with you, ask for their feedback and also observe their reaction and pay attention when they become bored or Tired. And that's when you'll know what to cut out. Now the fourth tip I have for you guys is to use creative assets such as video templates, music, sound effects, motion graphics, and plugins as this will speed up your editing workflow and enhance your videos. A great resource is Motionary, which I use all the time and is the sponsor of today's video. It's an all-in-one platform with a huge library of media assets that you can use in any of your projects. You can download as many assets as you like with various medias types to suit your video creation needs. Whether you're editing in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Premiere Pro, Motion Array has you covered. It's also very easy to find these assets. If you're looking for a title template, for example, like the one I used in this video, you can head over to Templates, select Final Cut Pro, and under the categories, you have many different filter options. I then select titles, and if I'm looking for a specific title template, I can also use the search bar to do so. Now, once I find the one I like, I can click and download that template. Then it's as easy as dragging and dropping it onto your timeline, naming your title, there you go. This way you can save time and make your videos stand out. No need to create animated titles from scratch or use the limited ones that everyone else uses that come with every editing software. Now Motionair has many more other creative assets that you can explore. It's membership based and you don't have to worry about copyright issues as they cover it all. You can sign up for your yearly plan or use the monthly plan, which is great, and cancel anytime if you decide to. I strongly encourage you to give it a try and explore Motionary's vast collection of creative assets. These resources will definitely make your work easier and faster, helping you become a better video editor. And if you use the link in the video description below, you can get $50 off the annual plan. So with that said, 
Let's continue with our fifth tip. So tip number five is to crossfade your audio. So once you trim down your ear roll, you want to ensure the audio between the cuts is smooth and doesn't sound abrupt. It's a great trick to make your videos look more professional and it's surprisingly very easy to do. Most professional video editing software have this feature. Now, instead of adding a fade handle on either end of the ear roll clips, I can select all of them and select option T to apply a crossfade. And now if we look at the audio, you can see that the crossfade has been applied, making the audio much more cohesive. A really useful trick for every creator. Now as a bonus tip, which I think is very useful for making your videos look more seamless, is hiding those jump cuts on your A-roll. By doing this, it will overall improve the flow of your video. Now a jump cut is basically when a clip is cut into two and edit it in a way that looks like the subject appears to jump forward in time. Does that make sense? Now I'm here, now I'm here. What about now? Does that make sense? Now I'm here. I think you get the point. Now I use jump cuts frequently in my videos to cover up my mistakes, but in order to hide these jump cuts, I add a new perspective to the viewer by cropping in on the image. This way it looks like it was shot from a different angle and makes the video also more engaging. Now using the jump cut for every single word can be annoying, so don't overuse it. It works best after finishing the sentence and not right in the middle of it, Otherwise, it will feel unnatural to the viewer. So there you have it, five editing tips I wish I had known earlier. I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something new. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Now guys, if you're interested in learning how to film and edit professional videos using your mobile phone, I have a comprehensive online course called smartphonefilmmaking.com where you can join other students worldwide and learn everything I know step by step to creating stunning videos. Make sure to check out the link in the video description below. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching guys. I appreciate all of you and see you later.